The question of how, how does uh, the concept of uh, emphasizing the power of, of the kitchen, uh, I'll talk here, <laughs> emphasizing the power of the kitchen, putting power in the center of the kitchen, um, how well does that work? And it becomes problematic because in a way, what, what, that, what Harriet Beecher Stowe is doing is two things. One, she is emphasizing the importance of women, the centrality of women to American culture, that women are the, the staple of the culture, that, 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 fam that American culture is all about family and the family is centered on, on the woman. On the other hand, then, that's simultaneously reinforcing uh, traditional notions of womanhood. How do we define a woman? A woman is a mother. Uh, what is the place of a woman? A woman is in the kitchen. Uh, so it's it, it, it so in a way it's having this, many of the same problems of, uh, regarding gender that it does regarding race. That it's simultaneously saying that the women are the center, the women are the power, but doing so in a very uh, traditional way, in a very stereotypical way, and in that sense uh, a, a problematic way. Uncle Tom's Cabin is enormously popular in Europe, in Germany, uh, almost perhaps as much as it is in America. And I think the question of why that popularity is there is fascinating to me, and I frankly don't know the answer to that. And part of the reason why I'm here now is to figure out what that answer is. I suspect that part of it becomes uh, a sense of uh, humanitarianism. People were opposed to slavery, felt that slavery, rightly felt that slavery was this tyrannical institution uh, and that it should be opposed and therefore uh, enjoyed reading this book because it was something that uh, was very much opposed to slavery. I think another reason for its popularity is, it, again, it's a very sentimental novel. It's a very engaging novel. So in the context of novels of the 19th century, uh, it's exactly the kind of thing that would appeal to people, race and slavery aside. In other words, even if it didn't have to do with race and slavery, it's written in a very emotional and sentimental way and deliberately written by Stowe in a way that is meant to appeal to women meant to appeal to white women. She knew who her target audience was, and she was writing for that audience, uh, and wrote successfully for that audience. And again, that's what Jane Tompkins is arguing, is she's, in, she's in using all of these rhetorical, sentimental tropes for this. Um, there's been one thesis that was written in the very early 20th century about uh, Uncle Tom's Cabin in Germany, and that person argues that part of the reason for the the, the the popularity is the leftover feelings from the revolutions of 1848 uh, and the desires for freedom, uh, the desires for German unification, and that they saw the revolutionary goals of Uncle Tom's Cabin and were very much uh, 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 interested in it because of that. I don't know if that's true or not, but to me that's an interesting question that I would like to be exploring more. I think that these kinds of images, racist images, get recycled because people are not aware of the history of, of tyranny, the history of the problems that exist in regard to these, um, to these images, and view them as simply unpro as unproblematic images. I suspect that an image like that is used because it's seen as exotic. Uh, it's seen as something curious, something interesting, something authentic from American culture, uh, without looking at it in a more problematic way, without realizing what might be offensive about this image. One can point to many images that are used today with um, representations of women, uh, uh, in advertising, say, especially, which are very problematic. Uh, and, and certainly many people would argue that such things are, that, that such images are exploitive, uh, but they are viewed by many people, 
as simply unproblematic. And part of my goal in this kind of work is to make people, is to help people get more attuned to the history of these images. These images don't just arise out of nowhere. Um, they aren't just out there on the web. There is a history uh, of, of relations between human beings that give rise to these images. So part of my agenda and part of what I'm going to be doing here in Germany, I'm going to be traveling around Saxony and visiting high schools and doing presentations in high schools, uh, to, again, to try to help people become more aware of the history of these kinds of images, the impact of these kinds of images, and why these images are important.